to see hands or, or whatever. Um, welcome to Otherworldly, the Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, weekly pr- show, uh, where we give you a little bit of the uh, e- exploration of all kinds of magical stuff that the uh, Changing Times does. Tonight, we are talking to Kurt White, who is an uh, author and a healer and a uh, speaker and <laughs> He's 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 in, even in the government, but he's not evil anyway, um, and a witch and a magician and a psychotherapist and a licensed Oriental me- uh, medical practitioner, and oh my goodness gracious, he's, he's a lot of things. But I want to get to actually having him talk uh, tonight. He's going to be talking about uh, the Golden Dawn system and the healing systems that they practices that they teach which i didn't know they did that i thought they just had ceremonies in circles so i'm kind of excited and uh so kirk what about you take over now uh where are you i'm gonna get you up on that oh we didn't lose him did he no i'm here Okay, there you go. Now there's your face. Now you're going to tell us all about what we didn't know and probably should have known had we been paying attention. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I know it all either, but um, yeah, for you know, for uh, to uh, let's see, somebody just asked a question and uh, yeah, uh, like the, uh, 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 either. One would be fine. Uh, somebody asked a question about how to yeah. get my attention. I'll, I'll cool. keep an. I will keep a okay. uh, eye out and. Okay, you you'll, you're in the middle of on. some expl- cool okay. explanation. Yep, yep. Um, you know, when you were talking about uh, the things I do, uh, I've come to to when people say, so you know, like, what's your what's your bio? bio what's your job description? I just say I'm Gemini. Okay. No, because uh, I'm involved in so many things. That does um, sound like a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, so the uh, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, uh, uh, you know, for just a little bit, I've been involved in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn for, I think, since I've been formally involved in with the Golden Dawn since I think around 94. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I had been... Uh, certainly aware of it. I had done some reading and study prior to that. Um, and part of that all arose because I was, you know, my, my background was sort of, you know, British traditional styles of witchcraft. And then, um, and then I, I've always been one of those people that it, you know, you tell them, I say, well, why did we do it that way? And, and if someone just gives me the answer, well, it's because it's traditional. It's the way we've always done it. I know that they don't know the answer. And so, uh, <clears throat> and so I go seeking the answers and trying to find out why we do what we do and where does that come from? And, you know, so of course you find out Wicca was influenced by both the Druids and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn uh, and a little bit of Crowley. And, but, you know, the, the Druids of the time, uh, Ross Nichols um, and uh, even Crowley were both influenced by the Golden Dawn. So, so it just kind of kept coming back to the Golden Dawn. Uh, ultimately, of course, Golden Dawn was influenced by the Masons, which is why I got involved in the Masons. I just kind of keep tracing things back, trying to find out how things get into where they get. Um, and so my, in my own spiritual practice at this is, is everything from, you know, uh, being, you know, very, very uh, sort of old traditional folkloric stuff with no rituals basically at all, uh, all the way up to Golden Dawn stuff, which is very ritualized. Um, so um, I don't know how much your 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 watchers and listeners will know. Uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was founded in 1888 uh, by uh, four high-ranking Freemasons who had belonged to a Masonic uh, organization called the Society Rosicruciana in Anglia, or the Rosicrucian Society of England. And um, and the SRIA was about the uh, study of a sort of esotericism, but as a more as an intellectual 
exercise uh, than anything else. Uh, they, they have rituals that um, sort of explore them just on a very superficial level. Uh, I am a member of the American version of that, the Society, Pro uh, Society Rosicrucianus in Sifatatibus Federatus. And, uh, and, uh, and so it, the, uh, yeah, they, they took the Golden Dawn were like, well, this is interesting, but it's not uh, an actual spiritual discipline. And we really want to go deep into this stuff. So we're not just going to read about astrology, but we're going to learn how to do astrology. We're not just going to read about alchemy. We're going to learn how to do alchemy. Um, and, and sort of that, that whole spectrum of things. Um, the, <clears throat> what that meant though, is they took the curriculum of the SRIA and they had to expand it significantly. And they did that by going back and reading and translating a number of the old grimoires. Uh, and uh, certainly, so there's a strong influence by uh, probably one of the bigger influences was Agrippa on uh, what they, what they do. Uh, but that, but also, you know, uh, certainly uh, Solomonic texts um, and, and a number of those things. Also, at a certain level, they were influenced by the writings of John Dee. Uh, you know, so there's uh, quite a lot of stuff. They were from a generation where um, there was the, you know, they were influenced somewhat and were in reaction to theosophy, this notion that everything came from a common core, uh, you know, that goes back and that there's one common truth and everything sort of branched off from it. And so their belief was that all of this stuff should fit together and all the Western mysteries were one part of uh, a whole. And, um, and so they created a system and they absolutely created it um, uh, of that sort of welded everything from the Western uh, esoteric traditions into one, one band. Uh, and it was, uh, they absolutely, you know, found a way to put some square pegs and some round holes. If you just, if you, you know, if you just sand off those edges a little bit, you can squeeze that in there. And, uh, uh, and so there are, are things that they certainly modified in order to make it fit the system rather than, you know, keeping those pieces of the system, uh, you know, uh, in their original form. And so uh, they created this system and the way the system, just to give more background is they, they have uh, the, the orders divided into three parts as the first order, the second order and the third order. And first I'll say the third order uh, is supposed to be uh, your sort of your your no longer incarnated spiritual guides. Um, you can't be in the third order and have a body. Um, you you must have must have passed away by then, uh, and so um, yeah, or transcended the need for a body. Uh, and that was actually one of the things that Aleister Crowley was like, "No, I have found a way." Um, you know, Aleister was. Yeah, little, yeah, crazy Al. But anyway, um, crazy Uncle Al. And, uh, but we, um, the, um, so that, that's the third order. The first order is, uh, you can think of it, it was designed to be sort of like a school. The first order is elementary school. The second order is, is high school or college. And, and so the, the outer order, which is what, which is the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, is a curriculum of learning a lot of the basics of this esoteric system. Uh, and so this is where you, you get the introductions to astrology and alchemy and, and um, you know, uh, various uh, tarot and different kinds of introductions to those kind of things. Also, you get sort of introductions to energy work and angelic work and, and a whole bunch of just introductions to things and and it's really learning the the language more than it's you know anything beyond that so 
<clears throat> I like to tell people it's kind of like like elementary school, where very first thing you learn in Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is the alphabet. You learn the Hebrew alphabet, uh, and uh, you know, and you and you start to learn all these little pieces, and a lot of it's rote memorization, like memorizing your your uh, times tables, your multiplication tables. It's a lot of it. it, it in some ways, it feels very similar um, because you're downloading all this information in your head. Um, and uh, because then when you get finally to the hot, you know, into closer to the second order and into the second order, um, that's when, you know, you spend all the time learning the alphabet, learning basic words, basic grammar, um, you know, basic sentence structure, all this stuff. So when you get in the second order, then you can engage in creative writing. Then you no longer have to follow the rigid rules. You can say, you know, yeah, I learned all these, these grammatical rules and I'm going to write a poem like T.S. Eliot. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to break those rules because I know them now. And, uh, uh, and so, so the Golden Dawn is structured that way. Uh, so the outer order is all about learning the basics and balancing yourself. So you're a fully functional balanced person. If you can't hold a house car job, you are not ready for magical work. Uh, and if you think you are, uh, you're deluding yourself. And that just shows you're not ready for magical work. Um, and uh, uh, because earth is the very first element you have to be able to master. And, uh, <clears throat> and then... So earth, house car job, basic security. Yeah, uh, and you can also think of this as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It, it corresponds. Uh, you know, and the second one is is second uh, level is 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 faulty thinking and and lies we tell ourselves and lies we tell other people about 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 ourselves. Uh, you know, and, and probably the biggest one you see with people is when they say, "Well, I'm not smart enough to do that." or I'm not rich enough to do that, or I'm too fat to do that, right? I can't belly dance, I'm too fat, right? You know, and, uh, or what have you, whatever excuse it is that you use that you don't actualize, that holds you back. So that's the second, second step. Third step is uh, your ability to form uh, functional, well-boundaried well relationships. Uh, your ability to to not be codependent, but still actively engage with people and, and have healthy emotional connection. Uh, once you can master that, then then the next one is your ability to actually uh, be creative and and actualize to actually have the courage and the passion and the creativity to to build on your connections, your ability to manifest things and your right understanding of how the universe works in order to start to manifest your world. Once you have that, now you have the basic building blocks to be able to be actually a magician and start to uh, make change. So there's a lot of self-improvement in the outer order and then just, and learning the basics then. Once you get right for the inner order, so and there is no specific healing work that you learn there, because that's just the basics that you're you're learning. You're learning the stuff that you're going to need when you start to do the healing work. And, but you know, all the books that are published. That's the stuff they cover. They just cover that outer order stuff, the Hermetic order, the Golden Dawn. Once you move into the second order, it is actually a Rosicrucian order, and um, and uh, and so, um, yeah. So so once you move into the second order, you actually start to take Rosicrucian related kind of vows, um, and you and you start to learn, uh, you know, deeper types of <clears throat> divination, more complicated and more in depth types of divination. You learn, um, uh, and and I'll I'll hit on some of those as we go a little bit into the details of what we're doing. Um, but you learn that, you learn more advanced kind of energy working, you learn more ritual work um, and, uh, uh, and all, all that. And so then you and you're actually required to start to uh, apply it. And you're also one of the things that you are graded because Golden Dawn, you take written tests and, and you also take uh, and you also take uh, 
uh, performance tests. I mean, yeah, if they, if they if they're testing your psychic ability, they you know they draw an image or you know back home and they say, now tell me what you images you get from this. Uh, you know, it's you know they're, they're actually testing your skill. It's not just just uh, you know. And uh, but uh, but yeah, but the the other thing that starts happening in the Rosicrucian order, the second order, is is that uh, you're told. So we taught you all these really fancy rituals. Now take what of that what works for you, get rid of the stuff that doesn't work for you, and create the ritual that now that you know what all the parts do. Now choose based on the ritual you're doing which parts you're going to use yeah um you know i i I like to think of that as you know me as a beginner with with my car yeah i all i know is i turn the key i put some gas in it i step on the little little thing on the floor and it goes zoom uh you know and and i can get through life that way and that's great but if i really want to be a real mastery of of that thing. I have to know how to take my car apart and and how to change the parts into different kinds of you know, uh, you know ways that I can I can uh, customize it to meet my particular need. And before I can do that, I need to actually figure out what the hell's going on under there. And so the outer order is what the hell's going on out of there. Second order is. All right, now customize your your ride. So, uh, so that's the analogy for that. Um, any questions yet? Questions, comments? Spitballs, uh, I, I know just it's, a certain it's... amount of bewilderment and questions we can't quite put. You talk about your car, and I grew up in my father's gas station. And I learned to take apart cars and drive them when I was eight years old. And other things you said that was that were kind of relevant. It's just like I'm so overloaded right now. I'm not going to waste anybody else's time with trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to remember what you said because. There's a lot of powerful stuff here. Well, I put out my favorite Masonic quote, we're not a secret society, we're a society with secrets. And we talked about pounding, I said pound harder. Yeah. And I do see a lot of the Golden Dawn hierarchy, not hierarchy of people, but hierarchy of goals and exercises which uh, kind of tune into a lot of what I'm doing, which has really nothing to do with the Golden Dawn, but a lot to do with things that I think the Golden Dawn actually represented. And it's really fascinating to hear so much about who they really were and what they really did. And that's my snort. So, yeah. What yeah. I would like to know is where where if people said, okay, uh, I I have five or ten years to put into this. Uh, where, where where do you go to join the Golden Dawn these days? Um, wow. Um, so or, or, or do you just go to you know sign up for Amork in the back of the comic books? Or I don't know. That's what I did. Uh, yeah. No, Amork. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, Amorc. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, if you are, <clears throat> uh, if you are interested in the Golden Dawn, um, there are some temples around the country and, uh, and there is one here in Vermont and there's, let's see, uh, for, I think almost all of you that are on here anyway, currently uh, are probably more or less from the Northeast. Um, <clears throat> so there's one in Vermont, there's one in Long Island. There's one in, uh, one that's trying to open in Salem, Mass. Uh, I'm I'm helping them get that started. Um, there's uh, they're still super active in New Jersey. Uh, there's one starting in outside of 
Philadelphia, uh, and then there's there's a number of other places. Northern California. Um, trying to think, who's out they're, there? They're still around. Hmm. So they're still around. Oh yeah, still around. Yeah, absolutely. So, and this, I suppose this leads to a, a thing, which is that. So the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn itself actually basically died. Um, uh, there, there was a an implosion, I guess. Um, basically, they call it the Revolt of the Adepti, and what it was was a number of the higher level adepts uh, were concerned that the one of the founders who had sort of basically taken over the taken kind of driven everybody else out and taken over um, that he, <clears throat> he started sort of demanding personal loyalty, not loyalty to the order, but, but, you know, personal, you know, I am un, you know, I'm unquestionably correct all the time. And, uh, and, uh, and in fact, this is where uh, crazy uncle Al came in because Al, Alistair Crowley, um, joined the order and was advanced faster than everyone else thought he ought to be. Uh, and he uh, uh, actually, he showed up at one of the, one of the temples and uh, it was going to tell them that they, they couldn't keep doing what they were doing. And uh, William Butler Yates kicked his ass. And uh, uh, so, so there's a, you know, day Willie. And, uh, but uh so, you know, and my my thinking on this actually is that the people who founded the Hermetic Order of the Gold Dawn, they created this system where you go through those earlier grades and you work out your ego issues. But they didn't have to go through those grades. They just made them up and, and pronounced themselves graduates. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, so they had ego inflation from this process which is one of the things you have to watch out for and uh, and so yes. well so, it was just like in 1904 when crowley decided that he had received the ultimate transmission and had been declared the ipsissimus and i believe that it is universally agreed that this is when crowley jumped the shark yep and yep. That was kind of where I lost him. And I don't know where you stand on that, Kirk, but. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, he, Crowley jumped the shark pretty early uh, and, and he jumped a number of sharks and, uh, uh, you know, maybe he was one of the best shark jumpers of time, all time. But anyway, uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, to get back to the Golden Dawn, because he went off on his own journey and. And for those people that, that that journey strikes them as something they want to do, you know, I, I applaud them. I would not follow that. Uh, but, uh, but so basically, eventually the order shut down and, and started to, to break into pieces. And, and that's where we get all the, the servants of light, um, you know, the uh, builders of the Adidam, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of spinoffs uh, start to happen. And, and a lot of those are still out there. But the, <clears throat> the order itself mostly died, um, basically when the last European temple shut down, they, uh, the information was given to Israel Regardi, uh, and and he ultimately published it later. And the and uh, and that's sort of what where a lot of people see of this comes from. Now, um, there was a temple that continued to exist in New Zealand, uh, and they sort of migrated, modified, they changed some stuff uh as they got older and uh and they closed in the 70s uh 1970s <clears throat> but um but uh and so nowadays there are an, and so then in 1982 uh uh chick cicero had been corresponding with israel regardi and they decided to uh basically start the order again. And so, uh, so 
Israel Regardi consecrated a temple, uh, a vault of the Adepti at Chick's house, and, and that sort of launched the Cicero lineage of the Golden Dawn. Now, some of the people who were sort of friends of the folks in New Zealand sort of jump started theirs. They were talking to the people before they died, the, the few surviving people, and they took some of that. They jump started a version. Um, and then since then, there have been uh, other people who have started versions, and some of that they they were split offs from existing, you know, mo more modern orators, and some of them they just started from scratch. Um, and so there's there's a pretty wide spectrum of branches of of different Golden Dawn branches out there, uh, and um, and some of them are very very good some of them are have become like like you see in paganism um you know some of them are kind of loose and say let's modify this to meet our modern needs and some of them are like in fact everything that israel regardi was too recent and they want to go back to the stuff that was being done in, in 1888 and only the stuff that was done in 1888 thank you very much and so uh uh so there's so there's and and everything in between uh so if you are looking to join an order, I recommend uh, you be cautious. Uh, just like if you're some kind of pagan trying to join a coven or something, be aware that there are there are people out there. Uh, if they're if they're asking you for money, or especially if they're asking you for large amounts of money, run away. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the uh, uh, the in my opinion the. The uh, reputable GD temples, basically, they don't charge for initiations. They don't charge for anything. They, don't, they, don't, they might ask you, like, for, they certainly wouldn't ask you for sex. Um, and and they, they would, um, but they, they, you know, they might ask you for, like, 10 bucks a month to cover the cost of incense uh, or wine or something like that. But, but they're not, they're not. It, it, they're not making a living off from it. I, I have um, to admit, I'm what I'm probably looking at is I I, I like the uh, Cherry Hill Seminary courses, and yeah. but because I am dubious about going for a degree in pagan studies, I'm like, what? Uh, what I do is I go to their uh, thing and I look up the reading list. And then I buy all the books on the reading list that, that used usually. And, and so I do the reading for the class. And I call that, I'd kind of like to, to look at, see what the Golden Dawn considers the basics. What, what is the outer or what do you have to learn? So, the, outer order? So the, the, the uh, oh, uh, uh, let me, let me answer these two questions. So if you want to join the Golden Dawn, um, you can certainly go online. Uh, I do know of some temples and I might be able to help you find one. Um, and uh, so uh, they, they are out there. And if you want to do your own reading, probably the, um, I mean, the sort of the standard text is <clears throat> uh, The Golden Dawn by Israel Regardi. And you may notice this is the black sixth edition. There is a seventh edition out now. It's junk. Uh, why? Um, uh, the, the, the seventh edition was touted as we're going to fix all the mistakes that were in the fifth edition. I mean, the sixth edition. And uh, instead they added a whole new set of uh, uh, errors. Um, so uh, the sixth edition is uh, is the one you want, the black one. People start to talk about these in the colors of the covers. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have the blue edition. I have the I have the big red doorstop edition. Um, so you know, um, that's a the doorstop edition. Huh? That sounds uh, like I, my stuff. It, it is huge. It is huge. Uh, yeah, we're getting to the healing part soon. I'm um, answering the questions that, that, that come at me. Uh, <clears throat> if you want 
to do some of the ritually kind of things. There's self-initiation into the Golden Dawn oh. tradition. It's a good size book. Uh, and again, it's by, it's, it's by Chick Cicero and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Okay. Uh, so that's a, another good one. There is, uh, if you want to get into some of the magical stuff, which includes actually some of the Rosicrucian things, uh, a, a good one is this, Golden Dawn Magic, again, by the Ciceros, okay? I'm in the Cicero lineage. They are my, they are my teachers. All right. <clears throat> so, so yeah, let's get to the to the healing, healing. question here. Um, so in the uh, in the Golden Dawn, being a Rosicrucian order, you know, you uh, there's the oath and the expectation that you will heal people. Um, it is a Rose one well, of the Rosicrucian vows. And that you'll do it gratis, uh, you know, And um, so, so it's in there. However, I, I think it's important to know that the founders of the Golden Dawn never finished creating the system. And so, at the at the furthest ends of the what they had for what they were going to do for their curriculum, they never got done writing it. Um, and so. Uh, and so healing is one of the ones where they sort of start to allude to it, but they never really finished it. What you get, all they have, and I've, I've talked, uh, not just the published uh, papers, because but there are also a lot of unpublished papers uh, that, that, again, those traditionalists like to collect, you know, a letter from, you know, Mrs. Withington to Mr., you know, something else, you know, and, and what they're, they were discussing in their ritual. Basically, uh, they never got much further than what you would sort of think of as the uh, Golden Dawn version of Reiki. Oh, that's really interesting because I have taken my Reiki attunements. Yep. And I have this whole concept of how the healer is just a channel for the benevolent en energy of the universe. I have a quote somewhere buried from a Native American healer called Yellow Elk, who stated, I have become as a hollow bone. Now, does that jive with your concept of this? So, um, yeah, there is this concept that there is, you know, there's energy, right? Um, divine energy you know the golden dawn system is a is i mean it's based off from a large part by the on the kabbalah which means we have an mm -hmm. emanated universe which means that, that there are there's a high you know that that the energy of whatever the divine you know, moves through different phases and becomes more and more uh, uh concrete until it gets to the physical world and, and that's uh, important to know that it's based on kabbalah because Kabbalah has its own intellectual and spiritual aspect. It does. It does. It directs the energy. So, okay. Thank you. Yep. So, so, um, but, and this is where, right, uh, 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 Chippecon may be able to say that, that as a Reiki master, uh, I see a lot of weaknesses in the Reiki system. Um, and because uh, I do not believe that energy by itself is necessarily benign. I mm. think- Oh, that's think, a big deal. I think divine energy is lightning. All right, well, because I, you know, to me, Reiki, my interpretation of the Japanese symbols and syllables is divinely guided life energy. Now, you're saying it's more like lightning, which, okay, well, lightning's like the force. It can be good or evil. I have to admit, I'm not impressed with the concept 
because this is based on the concept, if you want to go there, that the divine energy is the energy of the creator of the universe. And the creator of the universe would not admit energy that could cause harm. Now, lots of people manage to cause harm without that. And certainly, it's such a complex and this difficult topic that yeah. Yeah. I, I would mean, be willing to argue any point or just listen yeah. to any point. Yeah. Oh, okay, time to listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, uh, you know, I, and we can have these, these arguments and discussions later. But my, my point is, is that the creator creates uh, healing uh, and also creates tornadoes, um, you know, and um, uh, that, that, the, that, the, that creation itself is, is, is neither necessarily good or bad. Energy is only good or bad based on its, what it's doing. And, and so uh, if you are adding energy to something that has too much energy, then you are you are causing harm because you're channeling it in in an inappropriate way. So, and I, and I think really this comes back to the intention, which I always have considered the most powerful concept. We're we're burning time here, Griffin. Yeah. Let's let yeah. Kurt talk. Yeah. All right. So well, yeah, and we can get into the we could get into the discussions about intention and intention itself is an important piece of the golden dawn system um and and that's and that's where we're going um uh and although although that itself is a modern invention um that that was sort of invented around the 1800s um th that your intention had anything to do with anything otherwise it was all the gods and you just asked the gods to do it for you and if it was their intention they would do it um but nonetheless so if we have so the, the system based on the on both the, the golden dawn and and it's seeking backward into the um into the grimoire traditions and the western traditions agrippa etc you have the four four worlds of the kabbalah and and so you know you have the 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 highest level which is which is completely divine energy. You have the next level, which is an angelic level. Then you have a level, which is, which is sort of spirits level. And then you finally have the earth level. And uh, that's in the Kabbalah. Agrippa and some of the people in the 1500s basically said, yeah, we can't really differentiate between God is sort of unknowable. So we really are working with the only with the three levels of the angels, angels, and then the spirits, and then, and then uh, spiritual energies and then into the human. <clears throat> so these correspond with uh, uh, absolute Yetzera, uh, let me get that right, absolute Yetzera and Asiya, uh, and, and oh, absolute Bria, Yetzera, and Asiya. And so the four worlds of the Kabbalah. Now, in the healing system, then, <clears throat> like I said, originally the system that they mostly did was, was just here, we'll beam you with a bunch of energy. And, and we, will, we will ask the highest names of God to, to direct it and make it work for you. And, um, and this is, and that is okay. Uh, again, I'm, I, you know, this goes back to my Reiki comparison, which is that in my practice as an acupuncturist Chinese herbalist, uh, Reiki energy has a temperature, uh, and uh, it, people who practice it often will notice that their hands get hot, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so it has a temperature. And and in any kind of medical system, they'll tell you what don't you do to inflammation? Right, you ice inflammation. You don't add heat. And so uh, I have watched in my uh, twenty eight years of being a licensed acupuncturist. Uh, I've seen lots of people come into my clinic who were getting Reiki uh, for their inflammation and they got temporary relief and long-term aggravation because they were putting in 
they're actually adding heat to something that was already inflamed. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so, uh, um, so ultimately, what needs to happen is is in the system is that that things that you know uh, with anything you need to do a diagnosis. You have to figure out where's the problem and how is it best addressed. <clears throat> we have the elemental level, which is where we are. All right, that's where that's what we live in, and and the elements are earth, fire, water, and air. And, and there is spirit in there, but spirit is just to help direct the elements. Spirit itself doesn't have a, it is neither hot, cold, wet, or dry, whereas the other four are hot, cold, wet, and dry. So, <clears throat> so the, at this level, at the earth level, this elemental level, when you know if you're assessing someone at this level that's what you're looking for you're going to use looking asking touching looking at, you know feeling does it feel hot does it feel cold uh you know is it dry is it wet right because because um earth is is cold and dry and water is hot and wet and fire is hot and dry and, and why uh, did i get water water is cold and wet and and you can tell whether or not there's too much hot or too much cold um you know you can start to ascertain you can start to understand the organs and how they are assigned to the so if someone has a particular organ physical organ problem uh then you can start to treat it elementally all right um and and in some ways that is very similar to to like the herbalism in chinese medicine or even herbalism in western although western herbalism is, is less nuanced in these things uh, you can use uh, tarot um, to to diagnose. You can use uh, certain types of. You can do uh, horary astrology. Um, you know, and look what's going on in their in their sixth house. Um, now you can do um, uh, you know uh, the uh, geomantic divination, which is not the dowsing. When they use geomancy, they're using it. They're using it differently. You can. Uh, actually do uh, pulse diagnosis, you can do tongue diagnosis, you can do all those kind of things. You're looking for excesses, deficiencies, and stagnations. And, and then you can, once you have an idea of what the elemental imbalance is that's going on, you then there are, uh, you can apply energy. You can, if something's hot and dry, then you can apply cold and wet ice, for example. Uh, right? you, can, you can treat it on an elemental level. If it's just that simple, you can also uh, the Golden Dawn likes its fancy little wands. Uh, it likes to have uh, various rituals that are associated with the elements, um, and and uh, and so you can start to bring those wands and those elements and those tools into it. Uh, <clears throat> the some of you may be familiar with the uh, uh, the ritual of the pentagram, the lesser ritual of the pentagram. Uh, and um, which it's one of those things that anytime you see somebody draw a pentacle, yeah, uh, uh, for an element, they're they're basically they're doing the lesser ritual of the pentagram. Um, and, uh, and there are a number of Wiccan traditions that have taken that on, the Alexandrians being a big one. Um, and so, um, so you'll sometimes see that kind of stuff going on. And so that treating someone at that level, that's. That's what you do. You're working on the elements, okay? But part of your part of your assessment of someone is to figure out what level is this coming from. Is it really just I've worn out my joint, and and so it gets inflamed, uh, and that's because I did some repetitive motion, I, what have you, is it really just structural? If it is, then it's an elemental thing. But if it's something that seems more systemic, if you have a systemic inflammation, right? So not only do I have arthritis, but I have ulcerative colitis. And I have a number of things that have itis at the end. Uh, and so which, and itis means inflammation. So if you start to identify that something is more systemic, then you're moving up that tree of life, the, the Kabbalistic 
drawing. If, uh, if you're familiar with the Kabbalistic uh, tree of life, it's 10 spheres, little, little circles, and they're connecting paths. And what it is, is it's a model of how the divine is currently creating the universe, emanating the universe. I talked about emanating system and, and how we can then work our way back up it and be co-creators with the divine. But it also overlays into a map of your body. It overlays into the different function systems. And so the paths on that diagram, uh, I bet I can find that diagram and quickly flash it to your screen. <coughs> yeah, you can kind of see it, all right? Mm -hmm. Except little paths in between. All right. So the, the paths are associated with, with the, the zodiac signs and the planets. And, and they are going to uh, both be physical locations on your body, and they are going to be um, uh, functions on your body. And then, uh, and, and then I'll come back around. I'm going to expand on this. And then at the, the little circles, those are the, the planets in astrology. That's the, the planetary influences. And... So I have this little, uh, little note I kept here. Um, so if you talk about those paths that are on the, on the tree of life, there's, there's 32 paths. 10 of them are the, the, the spheres, and 22 of them are the paths that run between the spheres. Of those 22 paths, they're associated with the planets, the zodiac signs, and the elements. There are three elemental paths and 12 signs, seven planets, 12 signs. Um, and so... When you're looking at these things, you have to understand that, that at the path level, we're talking about a function. Just like in Chinese medicine, they talk about when, when they use a, the word lung in Chinese medicine, we're talking about the process of respiration and elimination anywhere in your body. So it's not just your physical lungs, but it's your colon, it's your skin because it respirates and eliminates. It's a number of things. And so at the path level, this is where you're starting to talk about, about, um, about you know, is, is it a function problem? Is it an inflammation? Is there poor circulation? Is the digestive system not working efficiently? What is, what is not working well? At the sphere level, you're actually talking about larger processes. You're really talking about expansion or contraction. Uh, you know, those kinds of things, not just, not just elimination or respiration. You're not talking about those kind of structures, but you're actually talking about these bigger things. So an example I give is, is that, <clears throat> I want to find it. I, I actually had it all written out here. Um, so here we go. Um, so all these, the 10 spheres, the 22 paths, all this stuff um, affect our whole being and are included in our spiritual or psychological and physiological health. These forces are associated with plants, but more global and abstract. So the difference can be seen this way. Jupiter at the sphere level is about expansion as a concept. Jupiter at the path level is about whole body issues with expansion, as in things are expanding perhaps in ways you don't want. Tumors would be an example. Right? Too much Jupiter is not a good thing because it's too much expansion. Things are growing out of control. Um, and uh, But Jupiter is also the movement of energy around the body, as well as those things that expand, including your lungs, your livers, your ribs, and your sides, and your veins. So if somebody has a problem with their lungs, and they, you know, they, they're having some breathing problems and they have varicose veins uh, and you know, uh, a number of other things where things aren't expanding the way they should, you might say, ah, this is a Jupiter problem. Jupiter on the level of the signs, the zodiac signs, controls your hips, your thighs, your feet, your ankles, and your toes. And if you think about them, they all are the things that allow you to travel and to expand your world. 
So Jupiter is always about expansion. It's just, is it this kind of global expansion? Is it more physiological expansion? Is it, is it, um, um, you know, is it systemic expansion or is it really just my ability to walk around? Um, so as you are starting to understand, you're looking at, so this person, again, they might have some lung issues, they have some varicose veins and they've got problems with their feet and ankles. You might say, ah, this is a Jupiter problem. And, you know, and that it moves through all three of those levels, all three worlds. So how am I going to address that? So those are the, some of the, the pieces. And so at the path level, you're, you're going to be assessing their energetic world, the level of them that is the one that then manifests their physical world, right? So it's the spiritual level. And so you're going to be looking at their aura for the color, the feel, you can douse it. Again, astrology, geomancy, they're in the Golden Dawn, they have a system of tarot, tarot readings. And it's called the opening of the key. And it's five different <clears throat> readings, uh, which basically it's five readings of all 72 cards in the deck. Uh, and, uh, and so it's five full deck readings. And the first uh, reading is about the elemental level. The second, third, and fourth level are, 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 are dealing with those signs, planets uh, at that level. Uh, and the fifth reading is about the higher, the bigger spirit thing. Uh, so you can use that as a diagnostic tool. Once you have assessed what's going on at that level, then again, a lot of energy work. You can do energy and rituals. Again, you can use the fancy wands. You can do some alchemical work with wands. You can use uh, uh, magic around planets and symbols, you can incense. Uh, each of those planets and signs are associated with a Solomonic angel, actually usually associated with the two of them. This is where you start getting into advanced astrology because they're associated with the decans. And then, uh, and, and the symbol that you use are gonna be hexagrams, not pentagrams. Uh, you're gonna get into crystal stones, oils, incenses, uh, magic use of colors, magic use of tastes. At the elemental level, you can actually talk about diet, but at the at the path level, you're you're talking about specific tastes, not you know uh, energy exercises, uh, al um, alchemical tinctures. Uh, you can make various talismans for people to wear. You can do create essential oils. Again, you can even do some energy work, putting your hands and and directing energy specifically around those things. So at that level, path level. At the, and then if you do decide that this is really just like, there's a global contraction problem or there's a global expan you know, uh, expansion, you know, their whole things are going on. And at this point, you're not just looking at their, their body, but you're looking at their life, their whole, you know, their psychological state, their family, the, all that stuff. And if, if all that's, and in many cases, you'll see that, you know, someone who has an inflamed body often has an inflamed family. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> or some other thing that is irritating them. Uh, I mean, it could be work, could be, I don't know, could be uh, shadow work that they haven't done. Uh, you know, and that's coming back to get them. All that stuff. So at the sphere level, uh, you can, uh, the diagnostic schools are, uh, tools are uh, scrying and astral travel uh, and those kind of things. Uh, there's, a, there's a system that's called Enochian chess, uh, which is a divination using a particular type of chess board uh, that you use. And it's basically a chess game between the gods and you're, <laughs> watching how that unfolds. Uh, tarot again, uh, the fifth the fifth reading, intuition, again, astrology, geomancy. The remedies at that level are really going to be uh, angelic. And in particular, you're going to be dealing with the Enochian angels. Uh, you'll, uh, the Hebrew angel will probably be Raphael Ruachael, which is the healer of God. Uh, your ritual tool is going to be an Ankh, probably. Uh, and again, it's going to be more hexagram, those kind of things in the rituals that you do. Um, and so, so, so 
the gold dodge system like everything is wicked complicated and uh um and like like most ceremonial magic things and, and but the point is is that you, what you're really trying to do is is you're aware that by moving energy you are you know your intent as we were, we were sort of talking about your intention uh is part of what influences what's going to happen to that energy good or bad and your intent however has to be you know has to has to be focused on the right target and the right time uh you know you know you know just because uh, you know if i my intent is to i don't i don't know but, but you know if i'm if my intent is to to you know shoot a gun and you know hit one little target but then i use a shotgun um you know yeah i might get the i might get it but i might not and i might get a lot of other things so you, you know you have to sort of um focus you have to focus your intent and you have to have to uh then focus it in the right way in the right place so the hermetic order of the golden dawn system of healing is is basically really kind of looking at all the different levels of of a person and figuring out where's the problem actually coming from and not just saying well i'll just you know i'll give you a uh yeah you know, oh, aspirin's good for everything uh you know uh yeah so so that's the that's sort of it in a in a huge nutshell uh um, you know we 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 argued about the some of the philosophical stuff in the beginning so we only had about half hour for for this part uh but i'm happy to keep talking about it um i would like to let people get a chance to ask questions if they develop yeah. the last half hour has been a blitz <laughs> yeah yeah I, I know it's a it's a lot well, we 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 did uh, perhaps get too chatty at the beginning. All right, I'm looking for. I'm just going, just looking at the concept of. I think you pretty much covered everything I might have imagined I wanted to ask. And if I couldn't think of a question, it's probably because I didn't understand it well enough, and I'll have to think about that. I did, however, send you a direct message in chat here because you are so cool i do not want to lose track of you <laughs> so all right that's yeah. my outburst <laughs> i will um so i'm gonna i'm gonna i, I mean I, I i think i'll just put this to everybody um let's see uh, I, I put the books titles in the yeah chat. So, so anybody who wants to save the chat, there's the three little dots at the bottom of the chat. You can save it and so in the chat, I just put my email address. Ah, how lovely. Do you have a website? I I have an antique website. Ah. I, I think it is at least fine. It's got at least five years old. It might be 10 years old. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was looking oh. for a website to put into the uh, announcement and didn't see one. Yeah, no. But, okay, well, it's, since it's... I also didn't know how long this class was. You had a start time, but you didn't have an end time. So I was kind of, I don't know if I uh -oh. have an hour. Or if the end hour time is when we all drop dead or fall asleep. <laughs> well, yeah, but but we do, we, a lot of, you know, eight to nine is, is a good... Uh, Mm -hmm. um yeah. but um so anybody else uh, you can just unmute and ask if or you know yeah. we don't want you to walk away with questions yeah i mean there's i think it's important to recognize that a, a lot of this because this comes out of um a lot of this is influenced by 1500s uh occultism that that it is um there's a lot of basically Renaissance astrology uh, embedded in it, and which is which is very different than than modern astrology, and um, and so yeah, to understand the, the how that works, what those functions mean, what you know uh, is 
is is an important piece. And then when you tie that into the the tree of life, and uh, and and that of course ties into the tarot and ties into you know all those pieces, uh, you know it becomes a, a a really really full and vibrant system. But yeah, uh, I think of it as like when I went to acupuncture school, acupuncture and Chinese herbal school. It was a four year full time education and uh and you know uh and this is sort of it's at that level um now and so it's not uh not a weekend workshop no no but it's an intro and and uh i had no idea that there was healing in the golden dawn system so uh, i guess that i i needed to be told that yeah Yeah. and so like you know healing is kind of the focus of my life and to find out that golden dawn has a healing ethos and practice is huge yeah yep yeah. yeah it's there uh <clears throat> it's uh, it just was never well articulated at least in anything that anyone is aware of that was ever published uh and even stuff that's not published but was archived places because it's, you know, not, it's not articulated in, in edition six the black book it is not no. no no the healing system edition six of the black book will just teach you the the, the all those basics uh but it won't it doesn't really get to the place where it starts to put it together the, this book does start to give you some places that puts it together um starting in chapter 10 uh, the magic of light um, starts to it starts to give you rituals. It gives you images, stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily do healing per se, other than other than you know Jupiter is sort of the planet of healing, um, and so uh, uh, so and sometimes that gets invoked, um, but also but the ability to communicate, the military ability to move around and travel can also be a mercury thing right you know so understanding how those pieces all fit together well it does seem oh go you go um you focused a lot on the healing aspect what other magic work uh is done uh in In the Golden oh, Dawn? Whatever that kind of what in a Golden Dawn system, what kind of other ma- magic, uh, magic rituals or uh, practice? I mean, I think, I think one well, of the, um, one of the most important things to remember about the Golden Dawn is is <clears throat> yeah, that it's, it's really about improving yourself and making you a co-creator of your universe and um and so you can cert you know you can so a lot of it is is keeps turning back into self uh introspection and self-understanding and how can i how can i you know be better at this thing um you know and and but but it certainly is used for you know uh, a lot of divination again trying to to find out solutions to problems, um, you know, it it's used for um, you know, spells of all sorts. If you want to think of it that way, you know, uh, uh, divinations to find your lost dog, spell to get your lost dog back. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, those are kind of you know mundane things, but but they're but they're there. Uh, or a spell to get a job, spell to you know uh, all that stuff, and you know, and it can also be done. Uh, the healing stuff can also be done over distance, just like just like you know any of the other spells. So it does it does all those things. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a piece I was gonna I was gonna throw in there, but I've forgotten what it was. Uh, I was really impressed at how you seem to have integrated the the Chinese traditional medicine, the acupuncture, with the Golden Dawn stuff, which. Like, is that just something you do, or is that something that <laughs> doesn't sound very Western? Well, it, I think the thing is, is that um, almost all traditional systems 
uh, if you go back far enough, were not mechanical, they're systemic. They're, you know, they're functions. Uh, they're all about how is, how is, why is this not working? You know, um, and, and so, um, you know, it, it, it's about the relationship between your different organs. It's about relationship about, and, and so, so it's that it's not, um, you know, uh, as I, uh, the comparison I make with Chinese medicine, but I think it applies here too, is that, is that like Western medicine is, is advanced plumbing and electrical, you know, it's about the hardware. Whereas, whereas most traditional healing systems are about the software and they're about the operating system and understanding how that stuff works. Uh, and so, so yeah, it's all about it's all systems theory. It's not, uh, it, it's not plumbing. Uh, so, and yeah, your point is exactly right. Your, your gut biome has a huge impact on your, and, and that's uh, on your emotions and, and vice versa. I mean, it, it they're all two way streets. Uh, and, um, and so uh, yeah, everything is, it goes both ways. And, and so, it, so really that's what these systems, all the traditional healing systems, whether you're talking about Vedic, uh, Greek humoral, um, you know, uh, uh, Yunani Tib, which is a combination of uh, Greek humoral and Ayurvedic, uh, which is mostly in Afghanistan, uh, you know, and a number of other healing systems out there. The, all the traditional ones are about systems more so than about about, you know, mechanics. Well, that sounds like the exact distinction between the reductionist approach of Western academic science in the last 500 years and the rest of the world. Yep, yeah, very much so. Yep, 